ahead and bite it again. Just got over one, bite it again. Do we have any announcements this morning? Okay. Um, Jill, we're going to be practicing. We've been practicing for our Christmas program. Um, our Christmas program will be December 14th. But I need to ask the parents if it'd be okay if we could please meet this Thursday.
And then you remember when you become a teenager and your parents become very dumb. Y'all remember that? And, you know, they tell you to comb your hair, and the more they told you to comb your hair, the more you'd stick it up on top of your head and get jailed and whatever. And uh, you bring home a nice looking boy or a nice looking girl, and they didn't approve of it, so the next one you brought home was, whoo, messed up. So we all go through that rebellious stage. Authority is something that is hard for us in our teenage days. And it's even hard for us in another way in our adult ages. Y'all bear with us. I know we've had most of your breakfast this morning. But if you see somebody inside you sleeping or on the other side of the church, the day you have my permission to throw a songbook at it. Be better if it's a coach berry because they're smaller. The hymn will hurt somebody, but hey, help them be sleeping in church. If you got your Bible, we'll be in Mark, and then we'll go over to Matthew. This is where Jesus had been up on the mountain and he'd been tempted by Satan. We know that he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and, and then Satan came upon him and, and tempted him. And when Jesus came down off the mountain, he was weak and the angels ministered to him. And so this is Jesus starting his ministry. This is where he calls his disciples and, uh, and gets started with his ministry. And I want to try to bring out to you what God's laid upon our heart this morning. In Mark chapter 1, verse 20, it says, And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and he taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Why? Because he, for he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes taught them. It says, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Listen to this. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. As I begin to read this and ponder what God had laid upon my heart, I began to see a scripture that I had preached many times, but I didn't fully understand it. You see, a couple of months ago, I put a paper on the back, and, and I told y'all that I wanted to grow. And I said, anybody that wants to grow with me, take this paper, answer some of these questions, and let's see if we can grow. And I, I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but the last couple of months, I've grown. I've grown in my preaching. I've grown in my understanding. Am I mature, though? I'm still just a poor little helpless preacher, dumb as dirt, trying to find my way sometimes. But in the last few months, I've grown, and I've always preached this as Jesus calling his disciples for his disciples to watch him. Because after Jesus left, the disciples were going to be in charge and founding and starting his church. And that is true. But it's not the whole truth. The Bible says that he came up off the mountain down into the valley and he began to call the ones that he wanted to come and join him, to follow him. And said they left their fathers and their boats and their nets and they began to follow him. And they couldn't believe and he went into the synagogue and he said that Jesus stood up and talked. And this happened all the time. I don't know if you've heard different preachers preach. But some of them sometimes stands up and you can feel the power of God off of them. You can feel the holy anointing off of them. And then there's some people that stand up and preach and testify that you're thinking, oh, my gosh, how long is this going to take? So when Jesus stood up in the synagogue and he began to preach, the Spirit of God began to flow off of him and his disciples began to look at one another and said, how many times have we sat in the synagogue? 
synagogue and heard the scribes and Pharisees, heard them speak, and we were born out of our mind. He said, but this way of preaching with authority is different. He says, while they were in the synagogue, notice that there was a man with an unclean spirit there. What in the world was he doing in the synagogue? Why would a man with an evil spirit about him, why would he be in the synagogue? He'd probably been there many times when the scribes got up and spoke the gospel or spoke the word, but he was never had the power of God manifested in the place. So something changed when Jesus walked in there and began to preach and to teach with authority. The man cried out, Why have you come to torment me? I know who you are. The Holy One, the Son of God. <clears throat> Jesus rebuked him and told him to be quiet. If he'd been in the south, he'd say, Hush your mouth. Because he didn't want everybody to know exactly who he was at this point in time. And he simply looked at the man and he said, Go. And the unclean spirit departed from the man. And the disciples began to look at themselves and said, We know that it was different. Kind of like on the road to Emmaus, you know, the Bible said that their hearts burned within them. When they speak, they, they talk within themselves. What? It's one thing to preach with authority. It's one thing to be able to feel the power of the Spirit on them. But it's totally another thing that demons obey. You might remember that when they were in a ship that a storm came up. And they walked Jesus up, they walked up to the bow of the ship, and he said, Peace be still, and the storm went down, and everything was calm, and, and the disciples were still mesmerized. Who does this? Who does this? Who walks out in the middle of a tornado and goes, Thank you? Nobody does this. Nobody casts out demons. Nobody does this. Nobody has the power of God like this man has. And as I begin to believe before, and I say it's partially right, it is right, that I begin to believe that Jesus had called these disciples to do nothing but merely follow him and this pick up when he left. Let's go to our next scripture. I want you to listen to this. It says, When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he said, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that, that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias. Others say Jeremiah. And one of or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say you that I am? And Peter answered. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, I want you to listen to this part now. He asked the disciples, Who do others say that I am? And some of them thought he was Elijah, some of them thought he was Isaiah, some of them thought he was one of the prophets. And he asked them again, he said, Who do you say I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ. If you don't know, you know what Jesus' last name was, right? Jesus, wrong. His last name wasn't Christ, it was Jesus the Christ. He is the Savior. That's not his last name. And, and Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter, and he told Peter, he said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but they have one person that could tell you this. He said, That's my Father in heaven. But wait. This is what he told Peter. He said, I say unto thee, Thou art Peter. He was Simon. Now he's Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the kingdom, keys of the heaven, kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever shall be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Oh my goodness, has he lost his mind? Jesus did give Peter the kingdom of heaven. He gave him the keys. To the kingdom of heaven, he said, Whatsoever you bind on earth, you bind on earth. He said, It will be bound in heaven. 
And whatsoever you loosen on earth, he said, it will be loosened on earth in heaven. Authority. And I'll say it the third time. I used to think that the sole purpose for this Jesus calling the disciple is to have the ability to start the church, learn from him, and go and build the church as they do in Acts where the Spirit of God landed upon them and they went out into the streets speaking in different tongues and different languages so that the world was amazed because they had this ability. But I will tell you that that's not the only reason why the disciple Jesus called the disciples. Jesus not only wanted to show them how, he not only wanted to show them the process, he not only wanted to show them who he was, but I want to present to you this morning something the church has forgotten. Jesus wanted to give them authority. You remember last week, I believe it was, that, or week before last, when we preached on the mind, that when God asks us to do something, the first thing we look at is, can I do it? And the answer is always, I can do that. Brother Mark, I, 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 I love you. You want to hear some stuttering? You ask somebody in church to do something. What? I said, if you have to determine whether you can do it, the answer is always, you can't do it. Because I can do nothing of myself, but I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. That this morning, the thing that we have forgotten, we remember that Jesus had authority. That Jesus could speak unto the devil. We remember that Jesus had the authority to speak to sickness and to heal. We remember that Jesus had the authority to talk to the Father and to do the things to make intercession for us. That at, at him, the devils would separate. And at him, praise God, the demons would flee. At him, they would spot him and they would know exactly who he was. But we are just poor little helpless sheep down here just being eaten up by the ravenous wolves. And oh, Brother Mark, more pitifully. You can't read your Bible. Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Peter, he said, your name is Peter. I changed your name. He said, Peter, he said, church, the gates of hell will not prevail against this place. Why? Because I'm with you. I got your back. And if it ever gets bigger than you can handle, all you've got to do is hit your knees right there. I'll take care of it this morning. I, I thought that when I wonder what it must have felt like. I don't believe there were physical keys. Well, I know there were. But could you imagine? Yeah, I got one. Jesus standing there. Saying, here, son. Here's the keys to heaven. Could you imagine? Who deserves it? What one of us among us deserves for Christ to stand in front of us and us to reach up and take the keys out of his hands? Could you imagine Peter, if they were real keys, I don't know what, but could you imagine Peter going, Me? Do you not remember? I'm, I'm an idiot. I, I stick my foot in my mouth more than I do anything. Jesus, well, you don't want to give them to me. Could you imagine some 2,000 and something years later as we stand before God and God stretches out the keys in front of us and says, Fairview, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you lose, in this church or in this community, he said, it'll be loosed in heaven. Whatever you shut the door on, he said, the doors will be shut in heaven. And it will be done that way because you done it. Authority. We picture Jesus as being the lamb that went before the shears, a lamb that didn't speak a word when he went before the, the slaughter. But where is the Jesus that walked into the temple and grabbed a hold of tables and threw them? Where's the one that took out a whip and beat them 
until they run and come back. Because you will not make my father's house into a den of thieves. A house of prayer, a house of refuge, a house of love, and you made it a den of thieves. Where is that, Jesus? They had authority. I believe Peter was walking down an avenue one day, and his shadow overcast the sick, and he began to stand up and walk. I believe they were going into the temple to worship, and there was a man standing there, or sitting there, been there all his life, crippled, begging pennies and nickels. He said, silver and gold, have I none? He said, well, I'll tell you what I will give you. I will give you a piece of what God's given me. Rise and walk. When the one fell out of the laws, when Paul was preaching because he was long-winded, and he preached all up into the hours of the night, he killed himself. Church, what would it be this morning? Hallelujah! If you took authority over this church. Boy, it's quiet, ain't it? You see, the church don't belong to anybody. Well, I, that's not my responsibility, Brother Mark. We, 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 we need to hire somebody to do that. What would it be if we took on the authority that this is what God gifted me with and by the power and the might of Jesus Christ in me, I'm going to stand with my brothers working with the Holy Spirit and this is what God's called me to do. What if God, if we took the keys to our neighborhoods, wait a minute, let's take the keys to our homes. What if we took the authority and said that Satan is no longer going to reside in this house. When's the last time you anointed the doors and windows of your home and got to live with the family or rebuked that rascal? <laughs> you say he's not here? You need to talk to this lady right here that just told us about how many kids at center school with daddies and mamas is in prison. When's the last time you took authority over your own home? <coughs> over your own children and say, God, this is my house. This is the house that you give me. And while I'm breathing, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. When's the last time you took the authority over your vehicle and said, God, you give me that and I'm going to use it to glorify you? When's the last time you look at somebody sick and hurt and going, we're going to pray for you. Hope you get better. See you on Facebook. Why not? Take them by the hands. Why not? Didn't it say somewhere in the Bible that we'd be able to tread upon serpents? What did it mean when he told Peter, he said, the gates of hell should not prevail against you? What did that mean? Taking the authority. The church this morning, yes, Jesus was a lamb. And he was taking the slaughter, but he was taking the slaughter because that was God's will for him in his life. That's why he was sent. We wasn't sent here as lambs for the slaughter. We were sent here to be more than conquerors. Amen. To Christ the Lord. Who has the authority in this church? Whose authority is it to pray for this church? Whose authority is it to lift up these members. Is that just my job? When's the last time you drew a line in the sand? What was it, Elisha? And said, that's enough. All y'all that's going to serve the world, you, you serve him over there, and all those that's going to serve the true living God, stand over here with me. To take authority if you end up in prison, guess whose fault that is? It's yours. If you lie tomorrow, guess whose fault that is? It's yours. But to live and take authority over your life and say, God, I've died out to myself and I now live for you. I claim this body in the name of Jesus Christ. These hands, these thoughts that go through my mind, I'm not going to listen to them anymore because God. I'm not going to worry about me. 
You know what? Hard to bow to authority. It's hard to get out of a comfortable bench. It's hard to walk up here while we're singing a song.
and the gates of hell should not prevail against you. There's probably some in here that don't have authority over their own soul. The devil's dragging them through every ditch he can. And until you take authority and reach out and grab the salvation of Christ that he's given to all of us freely, he will continue to drag through that ditch. Stand with us. Before she starts playing on another awkward minute of silence, I want you to examine yourself. Examine your life right now. What is it high time that you just grab hold of it and claim it?
Every one of us. And whatever we saw this morning, maybe it was our cigarette addiction, maybe it was our cussing, I don't know what it is. But Lord, you can only have one ruler. We're either ruling the things in our life or our life are ruling us. We claim at one time every one of these things that we we are taking the power over. Satan, we bind you from every individual, from the youngest to the oldest in here this morning. And whatever you tormented them or you convinced them that they were too weak to do, we bind you in the name of Jesus Christ by the blood of the Lamb. And Father, we pray right now that we may have the faith enough to grasp hold of this and believe it. That we may be truly more than conquerors through you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them this morning.